Hi, I like exploring and I want to share with you my exploration to Blender and making audio visualizers. Uh, this is based off a fantastic talk by Mike Hodgetts, where he goes into great detail uh, explaining how he made his how he made this, how it works, the very fine details. Uh, my goal today is to kind of give an overview how it works, how we can use this as a tool uh, so we can create our own visualizations. And I hope that you share with us your visualizations either in the comments or by joining us later in the Discord. Here we have some examples and some variations that I've made in the past. Some of these have motion blur, some of them don't. Others are just modifying geometry instead of actually doing uh, points. So one's a, a shell of a sphere, another one's just a plane that's being deformed in the same manner and using the same techniques that are going to be discussed in the remainder of this video. And let me know in the comments what you think, which one's your favorite, and uh, give me some tips and some ideas to improve on. Okay, so let's just get into it. So starting off, uh, this has three main sections here in the middle, uh, which are kind of like the reactive parts. Then we have a last section here that kind of adds reactivity to some materials. And then this beginning point part section, which is responsible for actually generating the points on the, 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 the geometry that we're manipulating. To start off, this is all basically using Eve. Uh, as a renderer, mostly so we can kind of see in real time what's going off. As a recommendation, it's good to take off temporal rejection, uh, a reprojection, uh, since it's going to create some blurring uh, while it's rendering. I do have motion blur on, but this is mostly kind of as an effect and more for rendering. Uh, if it's not, if your computer can't handle it, you can also turn this off while you're while you're actually creating your scene, so you can better visualize what's happening, and then you can turn it on or off. And the render depending on the kind of look and style you're trying to go for so in this particular project here and this is the one that i want to share so look down in the description for a link to this project uh, this is kind of like let's say a starter and kind of a clone of what mike's project was but then from here you can kind of take the basics and apply it to your own scenes and your own manipulations and your own songs So in these main sections, uh, the first one is obviously the point section. This is where we're going to control uh, the volume size, how big it is, and also the kind of the performance we're going to get. Uh, this is viewport here. These two uh, groups here are actually controlling controlling the density of the points and also the the size of each of each point. Uh, you can tweak this for your look and also for performance. In this case, since we're going to be like wanting to see it react. Uh, it's probably a good idea to keep something where you get a high enough FPS to actually see what's going on. Uh, if I come here, I'm getting about 16, 15. I'm also recording, um, but it's enough to kind of give an idea of what the vibe is and how it's going to react. Uh, you can tweak with these to kind of get the look you're looking for inside the viewport. Now, it is important to remember uh, that it is going to look slightly different when you render it out. Uh, once we render this, it will have a different look. And I've already tweaked it to kind of have the look I like or that I kind of, kind of enjoy uh, for this project. So just keep this in mind, okay? If you add more, it's also, if you add more density, it's also going to take a lot longer to render. Uh, so you got to be careful with these, uh, with these settings. But this is basically just going to set up the points in space, okay? Now the main meat and potatoes of all this are just going to be these main sections here. Now, generally speaking, when we're talking about like music visualizers, uh, you got kind of like the general approach where you only have one single file, which is the music file. And so then you kind of reacting to the different frequencies or you can, can filter out, like, for example, the bass. And once you filter out the bass, you can react to only the bass sounds. These have different kind of outcomes and different reactions, right? Uh, 
generally speaking, people usually prefer to actually have the files separated if, if possible, and that's what the approach is here. Instead of having one file that is the entire song, we actually have different files represent, representing different uh, instruments or different parts. Uh, this way, the, let's say the reaction can be more controlled and we can apply it to different parameters. So here we're seeing the noise riff section, uh, which is based off what a uh, stabs, which is kind of like this effect that's kind of going in and out. And we also have another one that's going to be based on the bass and another one that's actually based off the drum. So if we come here, you'll see that this is actually a kick drum and it kind of goes in pretty much throughout the entire song. While the lead kind of comes in and out, there's different sections to it. Uh, same thing with the stabs. They kind of come in and out. So this way you can kind of control the different parts. So for example, uh, the set stab sound, uh, if I open it up here in my audio player, we'll notice that there's no sounds here in the beginning. And then as I fast forward through here, we'll see that there's actually some parts that have sounds. Okay, so the idea is that I only want this particular node group or section to react to only to this sound. If I go over here to the kick, uh, we'll see that's a similar thing, but for the kick. It'll be off most of the time, but then from here on, the kick pretty much doesn't stop. Okay. So how do we actually get the sounds into Blender? Well. Here we just have a simple value node, okay? It's nothing more special than, than a value node. And then you click on the value node and you set a keyframe for it. So that way in the graph editor, it shows up with a default point. And then we can click on channel, sound to samples, and it will bring us here to this menu. Now you'll see here on the right hand side, Blender already has some, some uh, options here to filter out certain frequencies and also to do like an accumulator which is actually kind of what we want, the accumulation part, but we'll get into the details of why we want to use the node group specifically for that. But I'm not going to have to do that now because I already have the sounds kind of separated into different files acting as their own triggers. But this is in the case where you only, we don't have the sound separated, you can do it through here. Uh, you can also use other audio programs to kind of separate the sounds as you'd like. Again, this is going to come and depend on what your outcome is, what you're looking for. So in this case, I'm just gonna do an example. Let's just say stabs again. And then I do sound to samples. It'll create uh, the envelope based on the sound. Now this is all good and great. You can see the value node here changing, but you might also notice that it's gonna be changing uh, basically between zero and one. So, and you see also it's very kind of wiggly because that's how sound works. So we need to kind of actually, to make this somewhat useful, uh, we need to smooth these values out somehow. Now, it can be argued you can use it this way. It just depends on the kind of effects you want. Uh, it is obviously going to flicker a lot. It's going to move very fast. Um, so you got to be aware of that. You may have to control it. So the main issue with using the raw sound as an envelope like this, it's going to be very jittery. It's going to oscillate very, very fast. It's only going to go between zero and one in general. Now, this may not be necessarily a problem all the time, but for something that's kind of using, for example, in these cases, uh, noise textures with a W, uh, or something that you want to constantly change and increase, you're gonna need some sort of accumulator or buffer. And that's exactly what this, what this node group does here. If I drill into it, so this is the actual audio buffer uh, that Mike created based on Mike's uh, talk. And it is a little complex and how it works. And I do recommend looking at the video if you really want the details of how it works. But at the end of the day, it's just taking those values and accumulating it. Meaning whenever it sent, whenever there's a trigger, it's gonna add to the value versus just going between zero and one. So that way the value keeps increasing depending on whenever the trigger happens. There's a little more nuance, of course, because it could be like 0.5. So it's gonna add 0.5, it's gonna add less. When the signal is very high, it's going to add a whole lot more value to it. But we don't really need to get into too much about this. All we need to worry about is that once it goes through the audio buffer, then we what we have now is more of a linear, uh, um, a linear value, and usually and then we usually control how fast that is by a multiply. In this case, I'm using multiplies to control like the reactivity and how fast uh, it's going to move because the values are gonna be growing and sometimes you want them to kind of be a little bit faster, sometimes a little less, depending on the effect. Uh, for something more subtle, in this case, um, I'm gonna go ahead and mute these. I know I'm gonna risk losing my bake, but that's okay.
Um, no, not the material, the material stays. So right now I'm just having it react to the riff uh, part. Uh, here we go. So here, if I put this much higher, I'm gonna purposely make it really high. We'll see it's moving much faster, right? And then if I put it much lower, it's gonna move much slower. Okay. And you see now it's barely moving. So this is kind of like the, the, the fundamental part of all of this is all you need is the values from an audio file, from an audio source of some sort, feed into this audio buffer, which actually creates this nice accumulated output. And then we can multiply that value so we can control the speed of the reaction. And then we just stick it into different parameters in our in our node graph. Obviously, it's going to depend on the use case. For here, we're going to be using it for two things, right? We're using it to set this color attribute and also to, um, well, it's not a color attribute, but we're using it to set this attribute that's going to be used for the color in a different section. And then we have the set position so it can actually manipulate the the, the points. Uh, the base lead also uh, does a similar thing. It, contr it contributes uh, to the color uh, variation, and it also contributes to the actual particles and the points and where they're at. The drum here does not. Does a, we don't store the value here. It does contribute, but um, for some reason, I decided to make it its own chain here versus storing an attribute. Um, just different ways of doing something similar. Um, and technically, this one is actually creating more, more nodes, but that's fine. The whole point here is that we're just grabbing values based on the sound. And here we're adding a little bit of logic uh, with, this, with, this, with this, so that way it changes the color when both are hitting. Uh, when the, the noise riff and the kick drum are happening, then it's going to change the color here. Now that we've gone over uh, how the points are being manipulated and how the sounds are affecting the geometry here of these points, let's talk a little bit about the materials. I've already kind of spoken various times, like restoring these attributes for the materials later. So what's going on here with this material section? Well, this material section is kind of doing a bunch of different things. It's taking some of the uh, information from the riff, it's taking some information from the drum kick, it's creating a color palette, it's ramping up the emissions, basically doing to store to create two different values. One to create a color node here, a color attribute, another one for strength. And what are these are going to do is if I open up here, oops, let's open up here in the shader. We see we're setting basically the strength of the emission node and also the color for, for the for the particles and the emission. Uh, this is actually we'll kind of like passing information to the shader. So here we're setting the colors in the geometry node and passing it to the shader uh, through <clears throat> by using these stored stored attributes. There's a lot of different ways you can pass information in there. Um, you can actually just pass the raw values and create the colors here if you wanted to. Uh, as you see, the shader is much simpler because of that, um, because I'm just doing everything in the geometry nodes. But there's different ways of hooking all this up. Uh, it's kind of like what, what makes more sense for you. In this particular case, uh, I did it this way. I do have some other examples where I don't, where I just pass the the values from, from um, for example, the value directly from the audio buffer. I'll just store it into one of these attributes. And then in the shader, I can go ahead and do whatever I want with it. Uh, but in this case, I did it in the geometry node and I'm just passing it through the stored attribute. And so that way, these color gets set here. Now, um, gets set here, yeah. Now, the reason why this is kind of set up this way uh, is mostly kind of to have control. I don't want necessarily all the points to be completely off. Uh, so I have this these color ramps and this map range to kind of control what the minimum values are. And that's so that way, even the darkest point is still slightly visible. Again, this can be dependent on what your look and what your outcome is. In this particular case, I do want at least all the particles somewhat visible, but I can also con control the highest and the brightest parts through the color ramp and the map range. So the whole concept here was, is just that the geometry node is kind of setting up the values for the strength and setting up the values uh, for the colors, and then we can access them through the shader node in these attributes. You can 
be creative and do however you want, depending on what you're trying to do. But in this case, it was just more to keep the contrast between the brightest parts and the, the darkest parts and make sure that nothing is actually turned off completely. Okay, so just so we can get a clear view of what's going on with the materials and how it's affecting everything, I went ahead and disabled all the set positions for the different sections. And all we're seeing now is the actual reactivity of the sound, of the color, of the material. So we notice here it's kind of shifting a little bit as the bass is kicking in, not a lot. That's a, kind of on purpose. It has a slight effect, not very strong. But then we'll notice that once the other instruments, the kick comes in, we'll start seeing it changing and flashing a little bit. And this is kind of that logic I was talking about where it has to have the kick and a little bit of the riff for it to give that trigger. So it's not every single kick, it kind of creates a little bit of variety. So here we're seeing the color kind of shifting, kind of moving around a little bit, depending on, on what's going on with the, with the audio reactions. Uh, and you can see as I fast forward through here, it does actually shift through some different colors, has points where it kind of jumps around a little bit, which is kind of the intent here. And just to finish off, uh, as you can see, there is some the music going on in the background. Uh, in order to actually get this, just very simply put the full audio file here into the video editor. In this case, I have the volume very low, just so that way it's not kind of overpowering everything. But if you want to render directly from here, you can directly render directly from, from Blender and it'll have the audio already uh, incorporated. Or you can use something like DaVinci or come back later and then composite it in in a different project, however you like. In this case, I just wanted to highlight that I'm using the, the video editing tab here just to kind of put out the audio so that we can see it together. I also want to share this last here example of a floor plane, uh, just a simple plane that's also being manipulated by, by some of the sounds. I took a slightly different approach, kind of how I was mentioning before in the video. Here in the geometry node, uh, I'm just simply using the geometry node to set the kick and stabs values and storing them into these stored attributes. And then in the shader editor, I'm just using these attributes to then manipulate, uh, in this case, different wave textures um, on this plane object. So this plane here is just using a simple geometry node uh, with some, with some uh, um, subdivision just so that way it has some points to work with otherwise it won't work out correctly and as you see here it's kind of moving in a similar way uh just basically based on the different inputs that's going on actually yeah so we see here the same kind of reactions again it's just based on some waves some textures uh, I have a sphere here, some ramping controlling the flatness here in the center. Uh, this one here controlling kind of a noisiness around. And then another texture of rings to kind of create a ringing motion. So that way they kind of pump, pull, bumps out as it's moving along. Obviously this is not a finalized, uh, a finalized idea. Just wanted to put it in here so that way you could also see it. Uh, the different approach that you don't have to necessarily do it all inside of the geometry nodes. The key here is just getting these bu audio buffer values so that way you have an accumulated value throughout your project, uh, that which is much more useful. Well, that's it for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and the tutorial walkthrough. Please feel free to drop a comment, like and subscribe, join our Discord, take this project file, make it your own, manipulate it, do whatever you want, whatever you can, and share with us your, your progress. Thank you. See you later.